Welcome to today's program. My name is Rick Renner and today I'm here again with Denise. And today we're going to wrap up our teaching called How to Navigate a Pandemic and Other Coming Periods of Isolation. There's all kinds of isolation in life. Sometimes people feel isolated when they're on vacation. Some people feel isolated because of a change in relationship with family or friends or maybe because of work schedules. But rather than sit around and twiddle your thumbs and say, oh, what do I do with myself? There's a lot you can do when you're under quarantine or in a period of isolation. And that's what we've been talking about this week. And so far we've seen that when you're in a period of isolation, seize the moment to fill yourself with good resources. In Tuesday's program, we saw that rather than sit around and think about yourself, it's time for you to reach out to somebody else. Then in Wednesday's program, we saw it's time for you to connect by technology. If you can't physically get to church, then go to church online. There are so many resources available to you. Then yesterday we saw that when you feel like you're under quarantine or in a time of isolation, what a time for you to finish projects around the house. And today we're going to come to number five. Ay, 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 Denise, this is going to be amazing, but it's going to be good. But hey, I want to remind you that we're offering you the whole series called How to Navigate a Pandemic and other coming periods of isolation. More are on the way because Jesus prophesied it in Matthew chapter 24 and Luke chapter 21. I'm going to show you that in the Bible today. And this comes with a wonderful study guide. By the way, this is the last day that we're offering this on the program this week. We're also offering you my book called Last Day's Survival Guide, a scriptural handbook to prepare you for these perilous times today is the last day we're offering you this on the program this week. You need this book. It is loaded with insights. It is so practical about how you can navigate the last days successfully and in the power of God. And please order yours now. You can order it by going online or give us a call. And we're also offering you my book, brand new book, today for the last time, called Build Your Foundation, Six Must-Have Beliefs for Constructing an Unshakable Christian Life. If you want an unshakable Christian life, please order this book and read it. Again, you can order it by going online or giving us a call. This book will make a difference in your life or in the life of someone else. And if you're not a partner, please pray about becoming a partner with our ministry. When you're a partner, you help us take this teaching to people all over the world. I just saw a report of the various nations that are tuning in to hear the teaching of God's Word through this program. My friends, people all over the planet are tuning in and we're able to take this program to them because of people like you people whom we call partners. Really, they are our partners because they give regularly into our ministry financially and their finances enable us to take this teaching to people all over the planet. And the moment you become a partner, we'll send you Denise's book called The Gift of Forgiveness and we'll send you my book called Life in the Combat Zone. This is our way of saying welcome to the partner family. And let me remind you that if you need prayer, we really want to pray for you. The weekend's coming up. Maybe there are things in front of you that you're concerned about. You just want somebody to pray with you. Well, contact us. Call us right now or send us an email. And the moment we hear from you, Denise and I and our team, we're going to begin to really pray for you and for God to move mightily in your life. But today, we're going to wrap up this teaching about how to navigate a pandemic and other coming periods of isolation and what you need to do if you feel like you're just stuck at home rather than twiddle your thumbs and waste time. There's one more thing you need to do and that's what Denise and I are going to talk to you about in just a moment. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust, a message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insights and understanding from the Word of God. Here is Rick. I am so excited about today's program and I'm thrilled that Denise is with me again today. Denise, welcome to the program. Oh, thank you, Rick. Oh, friend, you need to buckle your seatbelt today because we're going to talk about some things that you're just going to love and it's going to help you. Well, I believe it is going to help everybody and it's something that everyone can do. 
So Denise, do you have your Bible? I do. All right, I've got my Bible. We always use the Bible in this program and I want to say it again. We're praying and we're believing for a revival of the Bible in the body of Christ. Amen? Amen. But hey, open your Bible to Matthew chapter 24 and let's review verse 3. Jesus was speaking to his disciples. They were seated on the Mount of Olives. And when they were alone, they began to ask Jesus some private questions. And those questions are recorded in Matthew chapter 24, verse 3, where they said, Lord, tell us when shall these things be? They were talking about the end of the age and the next coming of Jesus. When shall these things be? What shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world. You know, sometimes people say, oh, the world's going to end. No, 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 it's never going to end. In fact, the word world in Matthew 24, verse 3, really is the Greek word ionos. It means the age. They were asking, when will this current age end? They understood that eventually every age runs its course, and they wanted to know, Lord, when will this current age run its course? When will it end? The word end, the Greek word suntileus, means when's it going to be wrapped up? How will we know when we're coming to the very closure of this present age? What is the sign? And they asked for one sign that Jesus gave them many. And you can read all those signs in Matthew chapter 24 and Luke chapter 21. They are marvelous. In fact, I've written a whole book where I really elaborate on all of it. And the name of the book is Signs You'll See Just Before Jesus Comes. Denise, this is an amazing book. Yeah, I read it from cover to cover. Well, if you want to know what are the signs we're going to see just before Jesus comes, please order this. You can order it online at our website or call us right now. And there's a whole series that goes with it that is fabulous. It's very in-depth about the signs we'll see just before Jesus comes. But in Luke 21, verse 11, Jesus gave us one very specific sign we'll see as we come toward the wrap-up of this current age. Listen to what Jesus said in Luke chapter 21, verse 11. He said, there shall be pestilences. Well, there were plagues and there were pestilences even in the first century when Jesus was speaking these words. But he was not talking about his time. He said, there shall be. He was pointing to the end of the age. And remember, that's what the disciples were asking. Lord, what will be the sign of thy coming and of the end of this age? And now Jesus says, as you come to the wrap up, to the summation, the close of this current age, one of the signs is there shall be at the end of the age, pestilences. Pestilences in Greek is the word loimas, but here it is plural, loimoi. It's very important because it means there's not going to be one, there's going to be many. One after another after another. And that's why I call this current series, How to Navigate a Pandemic and Other Coming Periods of Isolation. It is likely that we're going to face all of this again in the future because Jesus uses the word pestilences, which is plural. And this word pestilence really describes old diseases that have had new life breathed into them again. They've become reactivated or it describes newly emerging diseases that have never been seen before that have a global impact. That's why we call it a pandemic. And Jesus prophesied this would be one of the signs we would see as we come to the end of this current age. Well, as a result of a pandemic or a period of isolation, people are trapped at home. They're wondering what they're supposed to do with themselves. And we've already seen it's a great time to fill yourself with good resources. It's a good time to reach beyond yourself to other people who are struggling more than you are. It's a great time for you to go to church online and to connect by technology. What a wonderful time for you to wrap up projects around the house. Yesterday we talked about cleaning your closet, taking care of your garage, making sure you replace that wallpaper, or repaint that room around the house, taking care of your yard. This is a moment when you can focus on the house because you're in the house and you're confronted with it every day. Seize this moment to finish projects and do things you need to do. And today we're coming to number five. And Denise, this is also something that everybody can do. Use this time. Are you ready? I'm ready. To lose weight and to get in shape. Woohoo! 
<laughs> you say, whoa, I just heard somebody say, oh, uh, I'm changing the channel. <laughs> but my friends, this is a God-given opportunity to take care of you. Well, you have an option. You can sit around, watch TV, eat what you should not eat and gain weight and come out of this pandemic or period of isolation looking like a blimp. <laughs> you know, a lot of people are saying, oh, I'm gaining so much weight. Well, you're going to gain weight if all you do is sit around and eat potato chips and don't physically move. That's what's going to happen to you. And you have to make a decision. I'm not going to come out of this heavier than I went into it. it don't say, oh, me, oh, my. You can decide to lose weight. And my friends, my advice to you is to set a realistic goal about how much weight you want to lose and not just lose weight. Since you're trapped inside and you really can't get out, why don't you develop an exercise program so that when this thing ends, you come out more physically fit? Denise? Well, I just want to encourage you, please keep watching because Rick is going to explain some things that most of us do not know that the Bible says, and it's going to be an encouragement to you. Thank you, Denise. Well, it's about exercise. And I want to say that what we're teaching today is what we do. I mean, we're really speaking from our life. We made a decision that we were going to seize this moment to get in shape, to lose more weight, to do everything we can to take care of our body, which is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And that's what I want you to see in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19. Listen to this amazing verse. Paul is writing to the Corinthians and he says, What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and ye are not your own? Oh, I feel convicted just quoting that verse. And when Paul begins this verse, he says, what know ye not? The Greek is so strong, it really carries the idea, do you not understand yet? Have you not yet gotten it? Have you not yet comprehended who you are? He says, your body, the word body, the Greek word soma, it describes your physical body. This one right here. Denise, it's talking about our physical bodies. You just need to touch yourself and say, yeah, he's talking about me. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. And the word temple is the Greek word naos, which describes a highly decorated shrine. Just imagine a cathedral with vaulted ceilings, marble, granite, gold, silver, precious stones. And it is the very same word used to describe the innermost part of a temple like the Holy of Holies. Paul knew that's what that word meant. And Paul said, if your eyes could be opened to see your spiritual interior, you would be stunned to see that you are a highly decorated shrine internally. You are ornamented with the gifts of the Spirit and the fruit of the Spirit and righteousness and holiness and all these things which God has adorned us with internally. We are a walking sanctuary. Our physical bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And Paul says, which is in you, which you have of God, and you are not your own. Well, if I'm not my own, that means I don't have the right to do with my body what I want to do. I'm simply the manager of somebody else's temple. Hmm. The Holy Spirit lives inside us. We are not our own. Now hold on, because now we're going to go to another verse, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8. And this is the verse that everyone claims so they don't exercise. They use it so they don't exercise. Listen to what it says, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8. For bodily exercise profits little, but godliness is profitable for all things, having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. And many people read this verse, and I did it for years. So I'm not condemning anybody. I did it for years. I did not like to physically exercise, and I used this verse as my excuse to not exercise, and it was my misunderstanding of this verse. Look at it. For bodily exercise profits little. And Denise, that's what people say. Ah, profits little. We don't have to do that. Well, what does Paul really mean when he says bodily exercise profits little? The word bodily is from this word soma. The word soma 
describes the physical body. The word exercise, the Greek word gymnasia, it's where you get the word for a gymnasium, but it's borrowed from the word gymnazo, and listen to what the word gymnazo means. It was used to portray naked athletes. You say, naked athletes? Rick, that is so visual. Well, hold on, you'll understand in just a moment. Naked athletes who exercise, trained, and prepare for competition in the athletic games of the ancient world. Removing one's clothes was necessary to eliminate all hindrances that otherwise would impede an athlete's movements. In this word is the idea of removing laziness, removing sluggishness, removing excuses. It's removing everything which would affect physical movement. Isn't that amazing? Because we can make so many excuses for why we cannot exercise. But contained in this word exercise is the idea of eliminating all excuses. And listen to this, there's something else really important. In the ancient world, it was believed that discipline and physical exercise was one of life's chief concerns and that it was, Denise, listen to this, essential for physical, mental, and spiritual advancement. Even for spiritual advancement. I'm going to tell you that is the truth. If you can control your body, you can control a lot of things in your life. People that have mastered their physical bodies spiritually really advance. And that was the understanding of the ancient world, that when you had mastery of your body, it developed you mentally, it developed you physically, and it caused you to have great spiritual advancement. Well, the Apostle Paul says bodily exercise, and here in this phrase we have the picture of people removing excuses, removing all their reasons for why they cannot exercise, stripping of all of it, and really throwing themselves into physical development. He says it profits, little the word profits, is a Greek word which means to be morally obligated. Well, that totally changes the verse. It means we are morally obligated to physically exercise our bodies. That's a very different reading of this verse. It means to do something as an obligation, to be indebted to do something. Originally, it was a legal term to depict one's duty to fulfill a legal obligation. And used in this context, it means each one of us have an absolute God-given duty to exercise. Now, I can just hear somebody say, yeah, but the Bible says it profits little. Well, the word little, the Greek word oligos, what does it really mean? It means its effect is short-lived. Physical exercise primarily affects life right now. Though necessary, it is temporal. But godliness, real spiritual exercise, even reaches into the next life. But in this verse, the Apostle Paul says for bodily exercise, and here he pictures all of us stripping of all excuses, all reasons for why we cannot do it, throwing ourselves into it, developing the body, and in the process, we develop our body, we develop our mind, we have great spiritual advancement. He says we are morally obligated to do it even if it's only for now. Now that is a totally different reading of this verse. But hold on, there's one more thing. Let's go to 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 4. In 1 Thessalonians 4, 4, Paul is talking about the human body and that we need to control ourselves sexually. We need to control our appetites. We need to control our bodies. And listen to what he says. That every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. The word possess is a Greek word which means to control, to manage, to possess, or to win the mastery over. The word vessel describes the human body as a vessel that contains something. Well, we already saw from 1 Corinthians 6, 19, that we are the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in us. Our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. We are containers. We are walking sanctuaries, and we hold within us the precious Holy Spirit. Denise, isn't that powerful? Oh, it's powerful. It's powerful as convicting. And he says we need to know how to control our bodies. We need to know how to manage, to possess, even win the mastery over our vessels. He's talking about our bodies. Then he adds, in sanctification and 
honor. Well, the word sanctification is a form of the Greek word hagios, which describes something that is special. And here he's saying that our bodies are special. We need to treat them like they are special. In fact, he says we need to treat them with a special attitude in sanctification and in honor. The word honor, the Greek word time, which describes something of great worth or something that is very, very valuable. Your body is valuable. Are you treating it like it is valuable? Are you treating your body as if it is of great worth? My friend, you need a revelation of what you carry inside you. You are a walking sanctuary. The Holy Spirit is inside you. And that is why Paul pleads with us in this verse and says, learn how to control, learn how to manage, even take the mastery over your vessel. It's a vessel. We carry the Holy Spirit within us. Mm. It's so powerful, Rick. Mm. And it's so, <clears throat> it makes you want to do something to take care of your body because your body is the house. Your, your body, it's always going to be the house of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit came in to live in us forever. So we need to take care of our body. Well, I want to end today with one more verse, which was really convicting for me. And it's 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31. Listen to this. Whether therefore you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. And one day when I was eating really badly a long time ago, I read this verse. And the Holy Spirit asked me, can you keep eating like you're eating right now? to the glory of God? <laughs> I already knew the answer to that question. Then he followed up and said, can you overeat to God's glory? <laughs> the questions were getting more difficult. Then I heard the Holy Spirit ask me a third question. Can you be a glutton to the glory of God? <laughs> well, the answer is no. No, you cannot overeat to the glory of God. No, you cannot be a glutton to the glory of God. And I want to add another question. Can you ignore your body and let your body fall to pieces to the glory of God when you could do something to improve it and to make it better? My friend, it's not ours. It's not ours. The Apostle Paul says in 1 Corinthians 6 verse 19, this body is not ours. The Holy Spirit lives inside us and we are morally obligated according to 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 8 to do something about our bodies. So here you are, you're at home. You've got time on your hand and now you have before you an option. You can sit on the couch and watch TV and do nothing. Eat a lot of potato chips and a lot of carbohydrates and things that just cause you to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Or you can say, Holy Spirit, please help me to do something about me. I'm home. I've got time. When this thing's over, I'm not going to end as a blimp. But when I finally walk out and greet the world again, people are going to say, wow, that person really did something during this season. That is your opportunity. My friend, seize the moment. God didn't send the pandemic, but if you're in a period of isolation, learn how to lose weight, set a realistic goal, and develop for yourself some kind of an exercise program you can do right there in the confines of where you are. Denise and I are going to be back in just a moment, and we're going to pray for you. The recent pandemic has changed all our lives in many ways. Isolation, quarantine, not seeing friends and relatives, and not being able to go to church as we once did. In this five-part series, How to Navigate a Pandemic and Other Coming Periods of Isolation, Rick Renner provides common sense advice about how to navigate the path that is ahead of us. Since these things are a reality in our lifetime, we need to learn how to navigate these periods and learn to use these times as opportunities to change our lives. In this series, Rick Renner will show you how to seize the moment to fill yourself with good resources, reach out to someone else, connect with others by technology, get work done and wrap up projects, lose weight and get in shape. This practical and helpful five-part series is available in digital or physical formats, starting at just $10. In addition, you can also order the book, Build Your Foundation. The world around us is being shaken, but your foundation can be so strong and secure that you will be unshaken, even if the world around you seems to be falling apart. Order 
Build your foundation today for just $20 wherever books are sold, in stores and online, or by going to renner.org. We are also offering the book Last Day's Survival Guide. Because you're living in the end of the age, you need to know what the scriptures tell you about how to live victoriously through this end time season. Order Last Day's Survival Guide today for only $25. Don't delay ordering these powerful books today. And don't miss this powerful teaching series. Call the number on your screen now or go online to order. My name is Joe Renner, coming to you from Moscow, Russia, and today we would like to share with you a testimony about how the Word of God can change a family's life. In the early 90s, we were living in Kyrgyzia, which was one of the former republics of USSR. We were absolutely non-Christian back then. We did not want to hear or listen to anything about God. Once, we watched TV programs with Rick Renner and Kenneth Copeland. For us back in the 90s, in Soviet Central Asia, it was quite amazing to see Christian TV programs about God. Yes, right. In the former Soviet Union, it was very surprising to see programs about God and His love on the central television back then, because they had never said about God in the Soviet Union. Yes, and I thought that Rick Renner probably was a very interesting person. How did he manage to get on TV? We were living in a Muslim environment in Central Asia, and it took me some time to start listening to what he was saying. But still, we kept resisting. But several years later, something happened. Suddenly, we realized. We realized, not here, but here. First, it happened to me, then to Larissa. We understood that we needed God. We could not live without God anymore. Yes, I got saved. Then Larissa received Jesus. And our whole family today walks with God. I'm so grateful to each and every partner for your giving. You are really purchasing or buying people's souls out of this lost world with your giving. My friend, I really pray that you'll pick up that phone or go online and order my brand new series called How to Navigate a Pandemic and Other Coming Periods of Isolation. We need to know how to use times when we're just at home and we don't have anything else to do. This series will really be a blessing to you or to somebody else. And remember that it comes with a great study guide. Wow, Denise, this is so powerful. And we're also offering you my book called Last Day's Survival Guide, The Forward by Perry Stone, a scriptural handbook to prepare you for these perilous times. And today's the last day that we're offering on the program and my new book called Build Your Foundation, Six Must-Have Beliefs for Constructing an Unshakable Christian Life. Amen. You need this book. Anyway, you can order all of it by going online or giving us a call right now. And remember, if you have a special need in prayer, let us know how we can pray for you. And Denise and I are gonna pray for you right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask you to help us take advantage of this season in our life to lose weight, to physically exercise, and to treat our bodies like they are precious, like they are the temple of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks for being with us today. We'll see you on Monday. And remember Ecclesiastes 8.4, where the word of a king is, there is power.